because Jesus went on the cross of Calvary and atoned for our sins today we are being called the children of God not just by adoption but by an unconditional love that cannot be surpassed by anything in this world Hello ladies and gentlemen, hello dear friends, welcome to another session of the Inspiring Bible Character Series with me, your sister, friend and host Ruth Makochi Saji. So today we are talking about lessons from the life of Jesus Christ. Lessons that we can learn from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The one who gave his life that we may live, the one who died that we may have life eternal. You know, this great Savior, this Redeemer, this Resurrection this one who is called the counsel or the prince of peace the coming king this one who atones for our sins this one who said on the cross of Calvary that it is finished this one who went to the gates of hell and locked it up and the keys are with him this one who says yes and no one can say no this one who left his throne of glory above and came down took on mortality and lived on earth he was spat upon he was beaten they wore him a crown of thorns they gave him vinegar to drink they pierced his side yet he endured all of these what about the criticisms the blasphemy and all the accusations against him yet he kept himself in one piece and endured all of this because of you because of me because of us so what are some of the life lessons we can learn from the life of jesus christ first of all we learn that god uses faithful and consecrated vessels look at his mother when jesus christ left the throne of glory above and wanted to come and save humanity he needed to take the form of man you know so that he can go through all of what man goes through yet without sin the bible says that he went through all these temptations all these afflictions yet he remained spotless he didn't fall into any of them you know he was spotless he took upon us all of our blemishes and he has made us new creatures so that all things are passed away behold all things have become new so you see that God used the blessed Virgin Mary this lady kept herself she was consecrated to God she was chaste she was pure no wonder the Bible says that keep thyself pure keep your heart pure for out of it are the issues of life so she was not just pure in her heart even in her appearance even in her lifestyle the bible says that she was espoused she was engaged to joseph you know and god visited her this was a young lady that was not promiscuous this was a young lady that had not sold her body for money this was a young lady who had not defiled herself or gone away from the presence of god living in compromise and backsliding and all of that no she was faithfully serving god and god looked at her you know god looked upon her with mercy with favor the bible says that in the old testament the priests you know they used to use clean animals to offer sacrifices you know the blood of those animals were used to atone for the sins of the people now that god wanted a redemption sacrifice he came through a clean vessel mary and used her to bear the baby jesus christ emmanuel who would save his people from their sins our lord our savior so god uses faithful vessels consecrated vessels as you serve God you know as you've chosen to be born again God wants you to be consecrated to be faithful unto him to desire his holiness and righteousness not just desiring it but letting the water of his word wash your heart wash your thoughts wash your words wash your appearance wash your actions so that you can be pure in his sight so that you can be committed consecrated and faithful in his sight so that you can be holy even as he is holy and the Lord will use you as you are consecrated to him in Jesus name we also learn from the story of Jesus Christ that God has a purpose for your life. Jesus did not just leave his glorious throne above and come to this world just for the sake of it, you know, letting go of all the honor that was given him, the angels meeting every of his needs and him just watching over the affairs of men. He came to this world for a purpose, to save his people from sin, to save us from iniquity, from the way of darkness, because God knew in his heart that if he does not bring a savior, we are all going to perish because sin brings death. But because Jesus Christ came. He came to go on the cross of Calvary. He came to 
die so that you and I may live. That is why as a child of God, you are not just living by chance, you know. God did not just create you without purpose. If the purpose of Jesus Christ was to actually come and die for humanity, was to actually come and save humanity from sin, from the claws of the enemy, from the power of death, from the works of darkness, that means your life has a purpose as well. So it is your place to go back to God and say, Father, here I am, you have created me, you've sent me into this world from the foundations of the earth. You had an intention for me now that I am here in this world. What would you have me do? What are the talents, the skills, the abilities, the gifts you've given me? Where am I supposed to occupy till you come? What am I supposed to be doing? Jesus said in John chapter 9 verse 4 that I must work the works of my father while it is yet day for the night cometh when no man can work. He had just one message, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And while he was beckoning on the people to repent, he made sure that he was that redemptive sacrifice. He was that pascal lamb that atoned for our sins, you know, that took our place in death and he rose again so that we may live again. I pray that as you go to the presence of God, the Lord will reveal your purpose to you and you will not just be lazy about it. You will not just sleep in your comfort zone, but you would arise and work while it is here day. For the night comes when no man can work. You will occupy it till he comes. You know, so many of us, God has given us great privileges. We have millions and thousands of so we have thousands and millions of social media followings. What do we do? We just use it to exalt ourselves, our flesh, and all the things that happen in our lives instead of using it to propagate the gospel of the kingdom, to preach the word in season and out of season, to win souls from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of life, to give hope to the saints, to encourage them, to bring glory to God and show for this praise. I pray that you will not misuse the blessings, opportunities, and privileges that God has kept on your path, you know, but you will use all of them to the glory of God to exalt God in Jesus name. Also from the story of Jesus Christ we learn that God is able to shield you from the enemy. Do you know that when the baby Jesus was born there were a lot of attacks on every side. Look at Herod. Herod wanted to destroy this baby. He wanted to kill the baby. He told the wise men that oh you are going to pay obeisance to the baby. You are going to give your respect to the baby. All right please when you go come back and tell me where the baby is so that I'll go and pay honor. So that I'll go and pay obeisance to the baby. But the truth is that he wasn't wanting to give honor to the baby. He wanted to kill the baby. No wonder when the angels redirected the wise men to use another route, Herod still went ahead to give a decree that would kill all children between 0 to 2 years because he estimated the time within which he was deceived by the wise men as he thought to be the time frame that can actually eliminate the life of that baby. But unfortunately for him, God had sent Joseph and Mary out of the land before he could even kill all those babies. And these women were just mourning their babies. Herod thought he had killed the baby Jesus, not knowing that God had told the mother, Joseph and Mary, to flee Pharaoh away before the wrath of Herod comes upon that baby. So I just want to assure you, you know the flight from Nazareth to Egypt, from Egypt back to Nazareth and all the places that God took them to. This is just to make you understand that God is able to preserve your life, you know. Yes, the baby might have been born in a manger because where they eventually ended up, there was no in for the baby to be born. But the truth is that whatever the conditions around you, God will always make a way of escape for his own. So dear child of God, trust God that God is able to be your shield. He's able to be your cover, you know. The paths of darkness have no say over your life if you do not give them the permission. The Bible says that we should abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. For those of you who are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty God, there is no need to fret because despite whatever is going on, the wars, the pestilences as children of God, our hope is that we are under the shield and the cover of the Most High God. And who can break through that cover and destroy you? The person will have to first of all destroy God before destroying you. So rest in the presence of God. Rest under the cover, the shield and the strong tower which is the most high God and you will never be touched. You will never be moved. The Bible says that a thousand shall fall beside you, ten thousand all around you. But it shall not come nigh you. These evils, these pestilences, they shall not come nigh you. Why? Because you are the child of the most high God. We also see from the story of Jesus Christ around his birth that destiny and covenant relationships are so important. When the angel had appeared to Mary telling her that the Holy Ghost will come upon her and then she will bring forth the Messiah who will save his people from sin. She should 
called his name Jesus you know Mary heard all this and she kept them in her heart but most interestingly she visited her cousin Elizabeth you know someone who was more elderly to her someone who had been serving God faithfully the Bible says that Elizabeth and Zachariah had been serving God in righteousness till their old age no wonder when Mary received this angelic visitation and encounter her cousin Elizabeth was already six months pregnant so in life you need destiny and covenant relationships that can support you that can guide you and immediately Elizabeth saw Mary she said ah the blessed of the Lord you know the mother of my Lord she spoke words of hope of encouragement and reaffirmation to Mary Mary stayed with Elizabeth for a while so as children of God we need those destiny relationships those covenant relationships that can identify the plan of God for our life that can identify the purpose of God for our life who can encourage us you know to keep on in this Christian journey to keep on with the work that God has placed in our hands with our ministry you know to build our marriages to the glory of God to build our potentials for the glory of God it is so important to have destiny and covenant relationships just like the relationship that David and Jonathan had just like the relationship that Mary and Elizabeth had or any other covenant relationship that you can find in the scripture even Jesus Christ himself you know he had covenant relationships you know he had the disciples he had the apostles and then he had the three apostles who were so close to him that he would even take them to the Mount of Transfiguration. It is very important to have covenant and destiny relationships to do life with. Also, we see in the life of Jesus Christ that great men come to the rising of the great. You know, when Jesus Christ was born, the wise men were able to identify his star even from the east and nobody inviting them. They had to follow that star and come to look for baby Jesus and they did not just end there they gave him gifts of gold of mere of frankincense so as a child of God greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world that means if you are in Christ there is greatness in you hence great men and women will come to your rising you just have to believe you know stay at your post because it is at your post that your light will shine forth and then other great men and women other wise men and women will see your star you will not be the one begging for them to come begging for attention begging for platforms you know they will see the light they will not be able to to resist the light and they will come you know to pay obeisance they will come to support you they will come to give you gifts they will come to be there for you so greatness attracts greatness the bible says that seest thou a man diligent in his business he will stand before kings and not mean men what has god called you to do where has god kept you be faithful you know do what god has called you to do what you know best for the glory of god with the right motives with passion enthusiasm and all your energy before god and guess what god will raise up men and women who will nourish you who will give to you who would come to your rising and who will be a blessing to you in Jesus name also we see in the life of Jesus Christ that as children of God your gifts will make room for you that's what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs and it's just so true look at Jesus by age 12 he was already in the temple with teachers of the law you know exchanging the scriptures you know speaking deep things about the kingdom at age 12 so his gift was making room for him was giving him platform was giving him access to the great men and women of his time to the great people in the temple and he was able to share the scriptures and god's kingdom with them so as a child of god you know your gifts will make room for you some of you are so talented you are gifted in writing in singing in dancing in acting you are gifted in so many areas whatever God has called you to do. don't just sit idly and say oh there is nothing I can do no matter how little it is just that the Bible says that despise not the days of humble beginnings because God will bless that humble beginning into a thousand and that small one into a great nation so whatever your hand find it to do please do it and as you're doing it I want you to be rest assured that those gifts right they will make room for you you know it will give you access you may be starting very little now you don't know what the future holds just be diligent just be faithful the bible says that he that is faithful in little will be faithful in what as you're starting off very little be rest assured that the future is exceedingly great i mean look at the great men and women that god is using to bless nations and generations today when you hear of their stories you hear how they started maybe just with two members five members 10 members 12 members 15 members 20 members today they are leading crowds of millions of thousands 
thousands, you know, winning so many souls into the kingdom of God, liberating many from darkness, from sickness, from the storms of life and the cares of this world. And God is using them to be a blessing to their nation, to nations of the earth and to this generation and generations to come. So never despise your humble beginnings because God will use those humble beginnings to make room for you. Also, we see from the life of Jesus Christ that the ministry of angels is real. Angels are there to minister to humans, to us. An angel visited Mary and told her of how she was going to conceive the Messiah by the power of the Spirit of God. The angel visited Joseph and told Joseph not to put Mary away, thinking that, oh, she has been unfaithful to him because the baby in her womb is of the Spirit of God, is by the will of God. The angel visited Joseph and Mary when Herod was plotting to kill the baby Jesus and told them to flee away from the land, you know, to leave Nazareth and go to Egypt until this wicked thing had passed away so it's really important for us to know as children of God that the ministry of angels is real and these angels are there to minister to our needs even while we are here on earth so as a child of God whatever you're going through say you are sick you have to pray to God and say God please release your healing angels to heal my body as I travel please release your angels to carry me through this battle release your angels to fight for me you know like angels are there to meet our needs to help us through this Christian journey through this pilgrimage and I pray that the Lord will give us the grace to have the to have ears that are open to listen to his angels, to have eyes that are open to see his angels before us, telling us what to do. You know, the angel appeared before Balaam, but Balaam could not even see the angel. It was the animal that was seeing the angel and the animal could not move because the angel of God was right in front and had stopped the animal. So as children of God, we have to pray for our eyes to be open so that we'll see those angels that are there to stop us from going astray against the will of God. All the angels who come along our way to encourage us in doing the the will of God whatever the case we must believe that the ministry of angels in our lives are real and we must pray to God to bless us with this great gift also looking at the life of Jesus we can learn the necessity of the incubation period Jesus Christ was sent to this earth with a great mission just like you and I we've been sent for different purposes in this world but do you know that Jesus spent the first 30 years of his life in an incubation period he wasn't seeking for public attention he didn't just go out there doing miracle signs and wonders and pulling the crowd to himself you know he first of all had 30 years of his life where he will be in the wilderness fasting and praying where he will just be meditating the scripture sitting in the temple learning you know and exchanging great mysteries with these teachers of the law and he will just sit in his closet asking the father what the father will have him do how the father will have him do it look at even the feast at Cana, and the wine was even finished his mother told the servants that ah look at my son jesus christ whatever he tells you to do do it you know and he told his mother that woman my time has not yet come so so Jesus had an understanding of the times you know he knew why he was here on earth and he knew that there was need for incubation period that period where you are just praying meditating the word of God letting God prepare you in the closet letting God use your pain to prepare you letting God use your frustrations to prepare you you may have been born in the manger and God is using all that experience to prepare you you see others are living in affluence influence and all of that and you've been born into a very humble family you barely have school fee to go to school you are living in a house where when rain is falling instead of only falling outside of the house is equally falling inside the house you don't even have a good place to sleep you don't have something decent to eat or wear and stuff like that just letting God use all of that to incubate you, incubate. When a hen have its eggs, right, it does not just hatch the eggs immediately. You will first of all cover the eggs for some time. And then when the set time has come, it will hatch the eggs, it will break the eggs. And out of those eggs, you know, chickens will come out chickens will come out but guess what if that hen was just to have that egg today and break it today guess what there will be no chicken there the liquid will just pour out so we need that incubation period where we get to mature in the closet we get to be prepared in the closet and then when we are hashed we can stand the storms of time you know we can fulfill our purpose we have the boldness the courage the zeal enough the strength enough the fortitude enough to be able to accomplish that for which we were sent so it's important for you to respect your incubation period and delight in it enjoy the process not just seeking for the glory of being out there but enjoy the close so that when it's time to be out there you know you're not going to fail there is this adage which says that 
if you do not sweat in preparation you are going to bleed in the battlefield so it's better you just stay there and prepare very well so that when you go to the battlefield you just conquer do you know that farmers who have matches they will spend more time sharpening their matches sharpening their matches so that when they go to the farm as they use it to cut the tree to cut anything you know it will just fulfill its purpose immediately and cut down the tree cut down the grass rather than having the matchet blunt without being sharpened in the closet and then when it is brought to the farm it cannot even cut the tree or the grass for which it was meant so stay in the closet and let God sharpen you let God mold you during this incubation period so that you can be a sign and a wonder to many also we learn from the life of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior that let your background be a catalyst to you sometimes many of us are so ashamed of the experiences we've been through of the families we come from do you know that God uses even the dirty empty broken vessels look at Rahab she was a prostitute but God used her look at Ruth Ruth was from Moab the terrible Moabite tribe who were having incest and all this sinful addiction yet God set her apart and used her until she came into the genealogy of Jesus Christ. So this is to tell you that you shouldn't be ashamed of your background. Jesus Christ himself, he was born in a manger. The day he was to be born, there was no inn available. His mom and dad went to where the sheep were being reared and he was born in a manger. I can imagine maybe the place was smelling, you know, some sheep were just there messing up the place. There was noise everywhere and it was so uncomfortable. But that's where Jesus Christ was born. He was the son of a carpenter, not the son of a president, not the son of a minister, the son of a carpenter. Yet all this did not stop him from fulfilling purpose. So as a child of God, it doesn't matter where you come from or where you've been through or what you've been through or what has happened to you. What matters is how you let God move through you, live through you, fulfill his purpose and plan for your life. Use all these things you've been through and where you come from as a catalyst to rather glorify God more, to rather praise God more, to rather be a blessing to the nations and show forth the glory of the Most High God. So it's important to know that your background is not a limitation to you fulfilling destiny. Don't say, oh, I don't have money. I don't have the resources. I come from a poor family family where I come from people don't serve God we have a lot of witches and wizards in our family and all of that stuff my father was a drunkard my mother was a prostitute and all of that you know God can still clean you up and use you for his glory he is the potter and we are the clay and he's able to make of you whoever and whatever he wants for his great purpose so just focus on God and that background let it be a catalyst for God using you as a battle axe in his mighty hands for this generation and generations to come for your nation and the nations of the earth and God will bless you immensely in Jesus name from the story of Jesus Christ we equally learn that marriage is very important you see many Mary was not just a single girl, single and searching, or a girl who had defiled herself, you know. The Bible says that she was espoused to Joseph. She was engaged to Joseph. You know, God wants families where there is a mother and there is the father. So Joseph and Mary were a couple and Jesus Christ came through them. Why did God not just pick someone who was not engaged or who was not even in the marriage scope? But God was trying to exemplify to us that marriage is very important because seed bearing and continuity is so important to the Most High God. So as a child of God, it should be your heart desire to pray that God should say to you maritally, God should bless you with a man after his heart. God should bless you with a woman after his heart. Not your fantasies, not your religious ideologies about marriage, but actually seeking the face of God for God to keep you in chastity and purity and give you to the man that he wants and give you to the woman that he wants or just help you find a partner that is a suitable helpmate for you so that you too can become one, agree together and raise up godly seeds and build a godly nation for his glory. Also from the life of Jesus Christ, we learn the necessity to focus on the kingdom of God. The message of Jesus Christ when he was here on earth was simple repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand you know jesus christ will go ahead to describe how heaven looks like through the parables you know the precious pearl you know he was just talking about the kingdom he was talking about how the father loves his children how god wants us to be saved you know how god will leave the 99 to look for the one his mind was about heaven everything about him was just concerning the kingdom of god no wonder he said that the pure in heart will see god 
God. So as a child of God, yes, we go to church. Something that really pains my heart in this generation is that we have become so religiously fanatic that we have forgotten the necessity of actually living in the presence of God, having fellowship with God. See, going to church is not what takes us to heaven. Going to church, doing church activities is not what guarantees that we have fellowship with God, that we are God's children, you know? What guarantees that we are God's children is actually fellowshipping with Him, actually abiding under His shadow, living in His presence, allowing Him to sit on the throne of our hearts to transform us, to help us. Some of us are too self-sufficient, too self-righteous for God to even step into our lives and help us, you know? The Bible says that when we admit that we are weak, then are we really strong because the strength of the Lord will come upon us. You know, we are saved by grace, not of our works. It is the gift of God. Some of us think that it is because we do this, we don't do that. We go here, we don't go there, we dress like this, we don't dress like that. That's what is taking us to heaven. No, 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 no. The Bible says that our righteousness is a filthy rack in the sight of God. So all we must focus on is the kingdom of God, the righteousness of God, the salvation through Christ Jesus. You know, the purpose and plan of God for our lives, repenting for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Everything should be about heaven to us, you know. The Bible says in heaven, God will wipe away our tears. You know, there will be no sin there. The streets are made of gold. Ah, the light there. I pray that the Lord will help us. He will show us mercy. He will save us. We will not fall short of his glory. We will not backslide. We will not miss it. He will keep us till the end. He will give us partners, spouses who will hold our hands to heaven. And the Lord will show us mercy and preserve us in his heavenly kingdom through all eternity. In Jesus' name. Also, we see from the life of our Savior Jesus. Jesus Christ the necessity of ignoring the schemes of men do you know that when Jesus Christ was here on earth he came to save mankind yet mankind was so cruel and unfair to him they insulted him they accused him they said that he was casting out all those devils by the power of Beelzebub they were saying that he was a devil he was using demonic spirits to cast out demons can you imagine they beat him they put crowns of thorns on him they gave him vinegar to drink they they ah oh God mm. They spat on him, pierced his side. He endured all the shame of the cross for you and I. You know, when he appeared before Pontius Pilate, they were asking him questions. Are you the king of the Jews? Herod wanted to know. And all these people were threatened. You are the king? And he just sat silent. He was silent just looking at them because he understood the power of his words and when they kept insisting he said you say that i am you see jesus christ he knew his place and he ignored the schemes of men the bible says that he knew the heart of men so he knew when to talk when to encourage them when to admonish them he knew when to interact with them visiting them eating with the publican he also knew when to just distance himself when to just get up very early in the morning and go to a quiet place alone and pray when to just walk out of the midst of the crowd and when to hide himself he knew how to just carry himself because the schemes of men were there but greater is our lord jesus christ above these schemes of men so because jesus christ lives in you greater are you above the schemes of men so instead of trying to defend yourself before people and all of that just focus on god focus on the kingdom of god stephen when they were stoning him he was focusing steadfastly on the kingdom of god so just focus steadfastly on heaven and all these things will become so minute and irrelevant and even the people will give up because they're just making a fool of themselves ah, to me one of the most important lessons i equally learned from the life of jesus christ Christ is the fact that he shows compassion to men showing compassion to men is very very important we see the Bible says that when he saw the multitude he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without shepherd so this is to tell us that why we say we are children of God why we say that we are born again we are now in the kingdom of God we must learn to show compassion to people instead of murmuring against them complaining backbiting fault finding and just wishing them ill luck and all of that we must show compassion to them to those who are sick who are hungry who are homeless we must not make jest of them we must not gossip about them you must not help them and tell everybody that you helped them you know the bible says that jesus had compassion on the multitude no wonder he was healing the sick he was raising the dead and he will not take money in return in this generation you know people will say they are praying for you after that prayer they'll say you should sow a seed or they'll tell you that come and pay this amount before they pray for you and you receive your miracle and all of that did we see that in the life of jesus did jesus ever take a 
dime from anyone before healing them. So why are we doing it? Did Jesus ever take any money from anyone before praying for them? Did Jesus ever take money from anyone before helping them? So why are we exploiting people just because they are desperately in need of help? Just because they have come to our church? Is it your church? I thought it was supposed to be the church of God. I thought it was supposed to be the body of Christ. Why are you taking ownership of it? Because you have been called to lead as a bishop, a pastor, a leader. Ha! You will surely give an account. If Jesus did not do it, why are you doing it? Why are you exploiting the body of Christ? Why are you exploiting the people of God? The Bible says that anything you do to the least of these ones in the kingdom, you are doing unto Jesus Christ. If you're feeding them, if you're giving them shelter, if you're giving them clothing, you don't have to make a public show of it. Just do it as unto the Lord. And the Lord who sees in secret will reward you openly, you know? And the same thing applies if you are exploiting the people of God, taking their money in order to pray for them to give them miracles miracle babies give them miracle blessings and all of that just because they are desperate you are taking advantage of them ah judgment is coming repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand it is also interesting to know that jesus christ had boundaries in relationships he knew the necessity of having boundaries in relationships one of the things that causes a lot of unnecessary pain to every one of us is that we don't know how to put boundaries to the different relationships in our lives be it our parents our siblings our mentors our pastors and leaders in the most holy faith or our co-workers friends and colleagues you know it is necessary for us to have boundaries you see jesus christ had disciples 70s hundreds thousands following after him some came just for the breads you know and the fishes some came for the miracles they came for the signs and the wonders so many people were following after him to hear the words of eternal life as well and others were coming because they genuinely wanted to be a part of his ministry but you know that i miss all these people he had these many disciples but he had 12 apostles so much so that when judas is carried even fell short and he committed suicide one other apostle had to replace him to make the number 12 again and before we know it jesus christ does not only have these 12 apostles he has singled out three of these apostles to be closer to him that he even takes them to the mount of transfiguration this is to tell you that in your circle yes you have people you interact with day after day your acquaintances people you serve god with in the vineyard of god you know but you must also have the 12 the 12 who are closer than the majority that you interact with day after day year after year and you must also have the three who are closer than the 12 you know people you go through intense battles with you even take for the one hour prayer with even though they will slip off at some point even though some of them will betray you at some point but you will pray for them like peter betrayed jesus jesus already saw it and told him that you're going to betray me but don't worry i've prayed for you and when you're strengthened strengthen your brethren so it's important that we have boundaries in our relationships we know those who are in the innermost circle those who are in the inner circle those who are in the outer circle and it's not like we hate them, but it's just necessary. They will all function properly when we keep them in the proper boundaries where they belong instead of mixing boundaries. So boundaries in relationships are very, very important. Our Lord Jesus Christ has demonstrated it to us over and over and over. He had his very good friend Lazarus that even when Lazarus died, he came and brought him back to life. When he was on the cross dying, you know, he handed over his mother to John the Beloved and told John the Beloved that this is his mother. He should take care of his mother. So we must learn to understand the place of every relationship in our lives boundaries are so important also from the life of jesus we learn the attitude of showing love all the times and rebuking when it's necessary you know jesus was a loving loving friend to the disciples to the apostles to the people he met to the multitudes who were like sheep without shepherd you know he showed them love and he taught them that they should love one another as he has loved them because by this men will know that they are his disciples he said i am not calling you servants i'm calling you friends so he loved them so much so that he had taken them as his friends but at the same time he was quick to rebuke when they fell short you know when they did something that was wrong and this is so important the bible says that open rebuke is better than secret love so when we love people we rebuke them we correct them the bible says that he whom the father loves he chastens, he rebukes you know he corrects so jesus christ would correct when the people had done wrong when he 
will heal the lepers and all the ten will go away and just one will come to give him thanks he asked where are the other nine lepers that were healed is it only you who has come back to give thanks so he was open to rebuking the people when the people turned the temple a place of prayer into a marketplace you know they were just selling ah making their trade enjoying themselves in their own pleasure jesus came and saw it, it was so heartbreaking he rebuked them and said his father's house is a house of prayer not a place for merchandise so he was open to rebuking the people when they were wrong but he was very quick to showing them love at all times even when he was rebuking them he was out of love so that they could do the right thing so as children of god we must pray for the grace to love others always but at the same time also pray for the courage to rebuke them when they are doing something that is contrary to the will of god or trying to lure us to do something or say something that is contrary to the will of god we see even job when job's wife came to him and said honey look at how god is allowing you to go through all of this curse god and die he said why are you speaking like one of the foolish women he rebuked the woman you know so it's important the bible says should resist the devil steadfastly and he will flee away from us we have to rebuke anything that is not of god and we have to show love to the people of god when they are less deserving of love that's when we need to show them love the most it's so important that we show the people in our lives love you know give love the bible says should love god with all our heart all our soul all our mind all our strength we should love our neighbors as ourselves so not just loving god not just loving others but also loving who god has called us to be who god has made us because you cannot give what you don't have many a times we don't know how to love people because we find it hard to love our own selves i pray the lord will give us the grace to be able to love others always and to rebuke when it's necessary in jesus name in the life of jesus christ we also see the necessity of speaking the word declaring the word over situations you know when he had finished fasting and praying the enemy approached him saying that turn this stone to bread you know bow down and worship me fall from this high building the angels will catch you and all of that he used the word to overcome the enemy telling him that man must not live by bread alone you know tempt not the lord your god the lord your god only will you worship he used the word of god to overcome the enemy so as a child of god you must know the word of god for yourself so that you will not be deceived the bible says you should test every spirit to see if they are of god how can you test them if you don't have the word of god if you don't know the word of god so the bible says that the word of god is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path I pray that the Lord will give us the grace to be full of his word, to be immersed in his word. So much so that when the enemy comes tempting us, when we are faced with trials and temptation, we will use the word of God to overcome. When the storms of life come, we will declare the word of God and we will have victory on every side in Jesus' name. Another life lesson from Jesus Christ is to have an authentic prayer altar. Jesus Christ will rise up early in the morning, even before others could arise. He will go to a quiet place and he will pray you know quietness in the environment quietness in our mind surrendering our cares our anxieties our worries all at the foot of the cross and just having that mind of prayer that burden of prayer praying until something happens you know the bible says even before he could go on the cross of Calvary, he was at golgotha praying until his sweat was dropping like drops of blood so jesus christ was prayerful if he being divine coming in human form could pray what more of we who are just corruptible flesh you know that have been saved by the spirit of god because we carry jesus christ in us i pray that the lord will give us that spirit of prayer the disciples asked jesus to teach them how to pray if you're watching me and you don't know how to pray you don't even know where to start i pray the holy spirit will baptize you with the spirit of prayer and you will pray and pray and pray through in jesus name also we learn from the life of jesus christ the necessity of making room for the will of God do you know that Jesus Christ he knew his purpose why he was sent into this world why he came to the world but even before he went to the cross he was praying father if it's possible let this cup pass away from me nevertheless not my will but your will be done you know so he will pray asking God for what he desires what he expects but at the same time he was still making room for the will of God because if he does not make room for the will of God how will God's plan come to pass yes God could stop him from going to the cross but without the cross there will be no salvation so even when it feels like God is silent on him it does not mean that God has forsaken him because he made room for the will of God God gave him the grace to be able to bear the cross he even died and God still gave him the grace to be resurrected and because he rose again you and I can live again so sometimes when we are praying and it feels like God is silent God is not taking that challenge before us you know god might just be 
allowing it for a greater good for a greater glory for a greater purpose so that your life may glorify him even more you have gone through that situation that's why the pain the energy you have gathered from it has given you more enthusiasm to serve and glorify god the more so because god allowed him to go through that cross experience that Calvary experience today you and i have salvation through jesus christ he is seated in glory at the right hand of the father making intercession for you and i all because he was able to make room for the will of god to come to pass nevertheless not my will but your will be done i pray the lord will give us the grace that will always make room for his we will tell god ah god this is what i'm praying for this is what i'm expecting this is what i would like to have this is where i would like to go this is who i would like to marry nevertheless father not my will but your will be done and as we make room for the will of god the purpose and plan of god for our lives will come to pass in jesus name before we wrap up we also see lessons like silence is powerful you know jesus christ when he was before the council and we ask him all these questions are you really the king the king of the jews and all of that he was not just flipping his mouth trying to defend him so he was silent you know and his silence actually worked for his good because these people could see that indeed even this man that they are crucifying all these things they are doing like that he is innocent even when they were sparing barabbas and sending him to be crucified the people were saying that crucify him his blood be upon us and on our children jesus christ was not trying to defend himself even on the cross they were saying that ah you will save others save yourself now jesus christ was still silent he was not trying to defend himself so as children of god we must learn to depend on god he's our defense he's the avenger of the righteous so we should not go out there trying to defend ourselves talking every time you know trying to prove a point to everyone trying to make them know that we have been called we have been chosen just keep on with god focus on god stay silent you know so it is very important to just stay with god you know silence is powerful sometimes your blessing will come just if you are able to shut up and stay with god it's not all the promises of god for your life that you come and write on social media you tell everyone in your life you're just boasting about him being proud about you you don't know where the enemy might take advantage so just be silent and walk with god god and the lord will do you good in jesus name one other powerful lesson to learn from the life of jesus christ is the fact that he delights in the salvation of men you know in the word of god jesus christ said he has not come to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved he said that he came to seek and to save the lost he did not come for the righteous but for the unrighteous ones the sinners the ones who feel lost so are you feeling lost are you feeling like you have fallen short of god's glory you've made a lot of mistakes you've been evil you've been wicked you've made a lot of poor choices it is for you jesus christ came you know he came to seek and to save the lost so if you're feeling lost in fact you are in the right point in your life where you need jesus christ to come in because he delights in your salvation that's why he went on the cross of calvary that's why he's in heaven sit at the right hand of the father interceding for you that the lord will help you because you are in the world you are not of the world that the lord will keep you saved from the ways of darkness you know from the attacks of the enemy and that the lord will keep you till the end so I pray that the Lord will give us the grace, even as he's been interceding for our salvation. You know, he has died on the cross of Calvary and resurrected for our salvation. And he has spoken words of life, words of hope in the Holy Scriptures to us. I pray that all these will not be to waste in our destinies, but the Lord will show us mercy. He will redeem us. He will restore us. We will submit our hearts to him continually and will be with him through all eternity in Jesus' name. Also, one outstanding lesson to learn from the life of Jesus is his humility and simplicity the bible says that he humbled himself in the form of man and he even went through the death of the cross you know through the shameful death of the cross he left his throne of glory above took the form of man came into this world just to come and save man from sin he went to the cross of calvary you know they accused him they did all manner of evil to him yet he endured all this because he had you and i at heart he was so humble and because he was so humble the lord has raised him above every other the lord god has exalted his name above every other name that at the mention of the name of jesus christ every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that jesus alone is lord the bible says that the lord resists the proud you know but he gives grace to the humble he lifts up the humble he exalts the humble and this is what we can learn from the life of jesus christ jesus christ could even be in the crowd and you'll not be able to recognize that that is jesus because he was simply he ate with the publicans you know he was discussing with the people he was laughing with them he was spending time with them not this generation where 
once some people are being raised to the human titles of bishop of pastors of general superintendents church owners and stuff like that they would be on top of everyone they want to drive all the private jets wear all the expensive clothes exploit the people take money for miracles signs and wonders make as if they are the ones who carry all the body of knowledge no one can talk to them and all of that i pray that the lord will help us in our generation me inclusive that will learn from the life of jesus his simplicity and humility the bible says that you know the greater one is the one who is the servant to us so if you have been called to be a leader a bishop a pastor a pope or whatever you are over the people of god it's not for you to start thinking that you are the papa you have to be honored you have to be revered and all of that it is not a right it is a privilege so it is still necessary like jesus christ was humble enough to watch the disciples feet for you as a leader as a servant as the one who is above you know as you think or as the people have made you believe it's your place for you to wash their feet are you the choir leader are you the prayer warrior leader are you the pastor are you the bishop are you the ministry founder it is your place to wash the feet of others because that is what jesus christ did learn from the humility and simplicity of jesus as we learn the lord will do us good and we shall finish well in jesus name and finally i would just like to say that one of the most important lessons to learn from the life of jesus christ is that jesus christ actually pleased God his life was pleasing to God no wonder when he went to John the Baptist you know at Jordan to be baptized of him John said ah you ha huh, I cannot even loosen the latchet of your shoes and you want me to baptize you Jesus said no permits it to be so for the moment you know and john baptizing the bible says that when he was baptized and raised out of jordan the spirit of god came upon him in the form of a dove and from the heavens a voice was heard saying this is my beloved son in whom i am well placed this is to say that jesus christ lived a blameless life lived a life that was all to god you know he was all about god no wonder he said i must work the works of my father while it is yet day for the night comment when no man can work when his mother saw him in the temple after looking for him over and over with his father joseph he said to them why are you people looking for me don't you know that i am busy doing my father's work my heavenly father's work my father's business you know so as children of god we must be sold out for the kingdom pleasing god doing the work of the kingdom doing that which god has entrusted in our hands why it is yet day for the night coming when no man can work and we must be vessels that are pleasing to god our lives must be a sacrifice on the altar that is of a sweet smelling sour before god and as we surrender all at the foot of the cross as we please god with our destinies the lord will bless us immensely in jesus name thank you so much for watching ladies and gentlemen we have been looking at some of the lessons from the life of jesus christ and you have been watching the program inspiring bible characters this program is here to help us learn salient life lessons as believers from bible characters that can actually help us in our christian journey in our pilgrimage journey through this world and as we do so the lord will bless us immensely in jesus name please do not forget to subscribe hit the notification bell so that you're always the first to be notified of all the content we upload on this channel also please do not forget to share this content to the people in your life you know to the groups you are in just share it to be a blessing to them just as the lord has used this content to bless you and as you do so the lord will bless you immensely in jesus name i've been your sister friend and host ruth makochi saji and you've been watching the program inspired hiring bible characters thank you for being a part of this series and until next time it's a bye bye